Tyson versus Doc. Mike Tyson versus Diana. Fifteen rounds to decide who will wear the crown. That's my tiara. Not no more, you highness. I think you're right. Mike Tyson wanted a fight that would bring him the buck. That's right. Princess Diana just wanted to beat up a man. Any man. I shall punch you so hard, your liver shall quiver. Yes. You damn nigger. Don King and the Queen present Tyson versus Diana. Riding instructor. Mama, you should have fooled around with a boxing instructor. I don't need the crown jewels. I shall take your family jewels. Ah, oh, ain't no fear touching Mr. Marble. It's malice in the palace. Tyson and Doc. I'm gonna put her on her cam in fucking head. Friday night on pain per view. Okay, 10.06 at WIOD. Happy uh, holidays to you. Happy Wednesday. Happy whatever the hell you got on. Happy Kwanzaa, etc. What is that? What is that Kwanzaa stuff, huh? That's like the 26th. No, I don't mean like when. I mean like what is it? See, I'm trying to say anything that would like uh, evade the obvious at this point. And thank God Jeff Rimmer is here. When the hell would I ever think I would say that? Thank God Jeff Rimmer is here on this particular day. Manishtana Halala Hazeh. Why is this day any different from any other day? That's because Jeff Rimmer is here to save the day. He might have been okay here this morning, you know. But that's another story which we'll talk about later. I'm sure we will. I might just have one or two comments to make. But, uh, you know, not now. Let's not spoil a good time. So anyway, Don Cherry is going to be with us on the phone in about 20 minutes. Don't sit back in a chair like sit up there by that thing's a microphone. Okay? Well, I don't want to. Uh, used to see. I don't want to interrupt anything. Here. Yeah. After all, he's been stimulating radio for the last four hours. Oh, so you're going to start? <laughs> you're going to start? Hey, what time is your show on? I don't have one. Yeah, exactly. That's my <laughs> point. Well. Uh, no comment. Okay. It's no, best I don't say anything. Let's all just do like Phil Henry now. No comment. No matter what it is, no comment, okay? No comment. Let's see if we got anybody listening this morning. Okay. Now, how many tickets did you bring, by the way? No, hang on a second here. Now, you're assuming something. Assuming what? That I'm going to give tickets away today. Yes, that I bring yes, tickets I am. From the Florida you want to know why I'm assuming that? I never said I was going to get Because you tickets. and Jeff Moss are into this ego thing. Oh, come on. You Leave are. Jeff alone. See, this isn't QAM. We don't sit here and play these, like, cutesy little games. You know, everything is I'm like not playing these, any these cutesy contrived games. arguments between uh, Ash in the Woods there and the uh, little dog or whatever the guy's name is. We don't do that. No, we, we also do. don't bring people on here to stick their head up Wayne's ass. If we want somebody to kiss ass, we got Depot. We don't have to have you kiss an ass. Well, listen, I was listening down uh, on my way in here uh, up the dial, yeah. and they're defending Brian Cox. You can Unconscionable. Say, you can, they're defending Brian Cox? They're defending Brian Cox. Based on Can what? you believe it? You know, based well, on based what? on the fact of one thing. He's on that radio station on Thursday nights. Well, that don't sound like a conflict of interest to me. Give me a break. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's where, your credible where, station. Where Didn't you... you tell me they said Joe Neuendijk went to Pittsburgh? Yeah. First of all, who would believe that? Didn't the Penguins just unload Robitaille and all in both Samuelsons because they couldn't afford the payroll and they're still in financial problems? The, the Penguins need more scoring power like I need more hemorrhoids. Well, uh, Joe Newendike did get traded. He got tra traded uh, late last night after the deadline, I might add. Yeah. Because the trade wasn't made by midnight. I just looked at the late uh, edition of the USA Today, which doesn't go to bed till 2 a.m., and there's no deal in the newspaper. But uh, for all the hockey fans tuning in this morning, Newendike Duen went, and it's just a bogus trade. He went to Dallas for Dallas's number one pick. Uh, first name Jerome, uh, second name uh, Alphabet, and uh, Corey Millen, <laughs> who was in the International League for most of last year. Now, I know for a fact... Oh, is this going to teams... be like when you couldn't pronounce the names on the PA that one game you did? going to be the same thing again? <laughs> we can't pronounce his last name, so it's Alphabet Soup. He's the number one pick out of Kamloops, British Columbia. Oh, play Kamloops. On the, uh, I like World that. That's my favorite team. place, Kamloops. Yeah, Kamloops. Uh, That's the medicine used with Fruit Loops. No, that's but anyway, the, uh, don't start on Denise already, will you? I'm not starting on Denise. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, uh, Newendike gets traded to the Dallas Stars, signs a five million dollar contract. What a boring team that is! Oh and, my God, you hey, talk about a team that they needs Joe Newendike. They can't score. That team is so goddamn boring. So maybe there's some justice there because they now need they him badly. Like Dano and Newendike. It would have been nice if the Leafs would have got him, but uh, I mean, it'd be real nice if the Panthers got him. But uh, the Panthers are doing great, and the big article today is how they're doing great with the low payroll. So they're not looking like to pay anybody gigantic money with all these sob stories we're hearing now from Wayne. 
Well, I can so, tell you, Brian Murray tried to get uh, New and Dyke, and in fact, I know... But we couldn't afford them. Pan- no, it, was, it had nothing to do with money. What was it for, then? The Panthers offered a better package of players... Than Dallas did. Than what Dallas did. So then why did. didn't we get The them? Rangers Anti-Semitic? offered better players. Why the didn't New we Jersey get them, The New Jersey Devils didn't... Uh, because the guy that's now running the show, Doug Reisbrough, got fired. Uh, Al Coates was afraid to pull the trigger. I was talking uh, last night uh, to a hockey guy who told me that uh, the general manager... Don't say pull the trigger because there are a lot of us around here today (laughs) who are right on the edge. In fact, I walked into the building this morning. I have never seen it. There were like 50 people. All the people associated with the AM in this building were sitting around getting preparing to play Russian roulette. The only problem is the guns were all fully loaded. So that should paint a verbal picture for you how things are around here. But anyway, you were saying... Al Coates uh, was reluctant to make a trade, and certainly, obviously, uh, he trades them to Dallas when really there's no question that in the Eastern Conference alone with the Rangers and the Flyers and the Panthers and the Devils, he could have made a much better deal than the Why would he want to trade him to somebody in his own conference anyway? Well, that's what they did. They traded him Calgary, and the the Dallas Stars are in the same conference. They played a nice game last night against the Penguins, Calgary, 7-1. They got blown out. Anyway, you were asking me about tickets, and why would you assume that I'm bringing tickets? I already told you that, because Jeff Moss said, you tell me what day Rimmer is coming on, and we'll have like a contest to see who's going to bring you the most tickets, which to me indicates probably like two or three pair apiece. Well, the reason I came is I want to see what I could mooch off of you. I mean, uh, where's uh, my gift for coming? Yeah, we got a gift for (laughs) you. We got your gift right over here, Rimmer. Your gift Uh, will be Don Cherry on the phone in about uh, 10, 15 minutes. The best. The best. Don Cherry. And what is that god-awful show? I was watching it on KBL on Sunday night. It's it's an old show. What show Where he's that? sitting in the bar and he had he was interviewing Lou Oh, Ross Don Cherry's and, uh, Grapevine. Yeah, what is that? It was two years old. Well, they're rerunning uh, the best of Don the Cherry's Grapevine. We don't want no Kinda more. Kind of like the best of this morning, WIOD. Right. See, there he goes again. More <laughs> shots. See, if you want to suck your way back into this place, which I know you're desperate to do, this ain't the way to do it, Rimmer. I'll tell you that right now. So you might want to re- reevaluate. Yeah. <laughs> why don't, see, why don't just for one time you say on the air what you tell me off the air. That would be a first. There's a first for everything, like that pot fan guy. But we'll get into that in a minute. Twelve, Twelve minutes after your mic's off. Twelve after ten at WIOD. Jeff Rimmer, the voice of the Florida Panthers. And by the way, I should mention the first place in the conference and in the league Panthers still because, thank you, New Jersey, they finally scored more than two goals last night. Every uh, time they score more game. than two goals, they win a game. Overtime, they beat the Flyers. All right. Oh! How do you like that? So thank you so much. We're still in first place in the, in the league. 12 after 10 at WIOD, Ideal Automotive and Truck Accessories has the biggest inventory of bed liners for your truck. If you're packing up thinking of getting out of town, here's the way to do it. Ideal's price and selection on bed liners is the best in South Florida. In fact, they'll beat anybody's price on bed liners. Always over 2,000 in stock, including the new Bodyguard Cargo Grip Surface Bed Liner. It's gripping. This bed liner is up to four times less likely to let cargo slip than your regular smooth surface bed liner. It increases the resale value of your truck, and it's resistant to products like gasoline, chemicals, and acid. And you'll find it at Ideal Automotive and Truck Accessories. Ideal's got that big one, baby, a 30,000-square-foot showroom that is jam-packed with everything you need at wholesale prices. Bug shields for cars and trucks, toolboxes, accessories for your truck like running boards, visors, light covers. They've got it all at 701 Northwest 57th Place in Fort Lauderdale. So zip on over. Over there or call them toll free 1-800-621-6464 1-800-621-6464 nobody beats their prices nobody beats their selection ideal automotive and truck accessories they be the best so tell me what's your secret this evening my dear uh, is that when I got more pleasure from the shower and massage than the black man I was with? <laughs> Passion phones, 8 p.m. till midnight on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. O'Neal, my queen. God. That damn faggot. I can't stand him. Okay, 1016 at WIOD. See, what were you just saying about Denise Potvin? We got a real epidemic. I want to talk to Cherry about this. We have a real epidemic in hockey, and I'm one of those people who's a real uh, nut about listening and watching the hockey games and have great respect for great broadcasters. I don't want to get into a big thing about that. But whether you're good, bad, or indifferent, the jockocracy that Howard Cosell talked about, where we got these ex-jocks who think that they're God's answer to whatever the question is, no matter what it is, and everybody wants to hear them. We don't want to hear them, and I know... 
being the name dropper that you are, you always love talking about John Davidson, J.D. I want to salute Red Fisher, that old fart up in Montreal, ripped him an ass on Hockey Night in Canada over the weekend. I saw it. So John Davidson is a big, he's a big pile of turd, okay? And I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell See, when I come on the air, I tell you the same thing that I tell you on the phone. I don't waffle. I don't cover my bets, okay? I don't like uh, wimp out and kiss ass. John Davidson never shuts up. That's your opinion. Sam Rosen ought to sue him for like... uh, (laughs) He should. He ought to sue him. He's killing this man. J.D. is known around the National Hockey League as the premier analyst in the game. He couldn't lick Harry Neal's ass. Well... Hey, that's your interpretation. It's, it's all subjective. Truth. It's all subjective. It's I think I think John Davidson, from an information point of view, is from an crap. analytical point of view. Absolutely, I think he's terrific. And I think he's the, great. Yeah, of course you do, because he's a personal friend of yours. Even if he wasn't a personal friend of mine, yeah. I still think he was good. He so, is, so, he so is wait strong, all right. Neil. All right. He is very strong. So in I other understand words, what no, you're wait a saying, though. So in other words, you like, as a play-by-play broadcaster yourself, no, who's always whining to me on the phone oh, about on. people talking over you, you like having the color guy, the ex-jock, talking while you're trying to describe the game. Is that what you're just saying to me? I think there's a time and a place for it. Yeah. I think there's a for time. talking when, over when the there's, When there's a lot of neutral zone play, right. there's nothing wrong with coming in with a and comment. That, and that's the key. But when you're incessantly talking and get involved in a conversation that has nothing to do with the play, there's a I problem I understand a, a fairy told me that last week he got all over me. Which fairy was that? Uh, I don't know, but... Uh, you know a lot several. of them, I guess. <laughs> That's what I hear. The tooth fairy. Yeah. How's that? Told me you got all over me because we were uh, discussing what was going on on the other side of the right. ice That's in right. the Boston Bruins game. Got a two-on-one break. We got a great chance to put the game there away. There wasn't a two-on-one break when we started discussing it. But normally, you were going to get nine times out of ten, you're going to be able to complete you're going to be able to complete what you want to get in. But there is. There's a lot of play-by-play guys that don't like any, any analytical uh, commentary at all uh, during the play-by-play. When the whistle stops, fine. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. And John Davidson and Sam Rosen, I think, are a terrific team. I kind of like if, if J.D. You, if you like hearing guys have a conversation that has nothing to do with watching the game. If you enjoy somebody making the game exciting... You also understand it's it's a television sport. Yeah, it all is right? a television sport. It's not sport, radio. Right. Now, radio, it's puck to puck, have play to, do, to play. You don't have to do as much verbal. I grant you, you can see things. You can like to do a little more diversion. But nevertheless, there are people watching. There are people who are veteran fans who understand everything that's going on. There are people tuning in for the first time every day. You're trying to make the sport exciting. You don't make it exciting to them when you're talking about caca. So you're saying there's an epidemic going around the National Hockey League right now? There is a broadcasts? major epidemic. I told you about Saturday night. I'm watching the... A hockey night in Canada there. The Leafs are pouting the Kings, by the way. The Leafs are winning every day. I should mention that. And Harry Neal, who usually, and I just t- told you, I think he's the best on color. He's talking over Chris Cuthbert. Now listen, Chris Cuthbert is, uh, he could have been doing that morning show here this morning. He wouldn't have known the difference. Chris Cuthbert is weak, okay? So it's bad enough that we get Bob Cole doing a Montreal game, and we got to put up with Chris Bu- Cuthbert doing the Leafs. That's bad enough. Harry Neal is talking while the Leafs score a goal. The man doesn't even get a chance to score the goal. Later on in the game in the third period, at this point, it's 4-3 Toronto. You just told me Harry Neal was the best. Now yes. you're saying he's talking while there was a goal score. Because he's catching the epidemic. It's it's like, a, you know, no matter how good you it's No, it's like Ebola. No matter what a good person you are, it's in the air, you catch it. And then later on in the third period, it's only 4-3 Toronto. It's a tense game. It's a tight game. L.A.'s making a big comeback. And here's Ron McClain, another great guy, but he's the, he's the studio guy. And the game is going on. He's interviewing Rob Blake of the Kings, who's injured and not playing. And they're talking while the game is going on. Here's Paul DiPietro scores the uh, fifth, which turned out to be the uh, decisive goal in the game. There's no call. There is no call. There's no anything. And Ron McClain says, here I am talking again when, Chris, you should be talking. And he still doesn't stop. He still goes on and finishes the interview. How can you be interviewing a guy while the game is going on? I guess the epidemic has continued uh, right through not only hockey, but now the NFL. They had the the play-by-play announcer list game where they had right. Bradshaw but, but this and shows Jimmy me, Johnson. This shows working. me that the, the powers that be don't think, they don't understand the importance of the great play-by-play broadcasters who can paint the picture either on radio or television. They don't appreciate it. They, they think that everybody wants to hear what the jocks have to say. Like Paul McGuire, who's nothing but a big pile of crap, a big buffoon who laughs at his own material. Or Chris uh, Collinsworth with that gravelly voice now who thinks that, you know, well, may, maybe he's auditioning to be doing that nighttime sports show they got on there at QAM with that guy with the gravelly voice. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Well, I think there's got to be a happy medium. I understand what you're saying, and there are a lot of hockey fans that I've talked to that agree with you. 
But when there is neutral zone play and, and there doesn't seem to be a great uh, flurry going on, I see nothing wrong. The great flurry. With, with, he with, needs a haircut, by the way. They had him on last night in the Pittsburgh uh, Calgary game. He's on the cover. Theo hockey needs, he needs a haircut. Now, there's a great little player that somebody should get. Calgary will never let him go, but there's a great little player. They can't. And they wouldn't have let Neuendijk go if he would have agreed to go back, but uh, they embarrassed him. I understand he enjoyed hanging out with the guys at Cornell, is the rumor that I get. Well, he did enjoy hanging out with the guys. Yeah, a little bit too much from what I understand. Well, no, that's not true. How do you know that? Well, it's just a joke, but right away you're defensive. See, you're starting, you're starting <laughs> to succumb to all those pressures, all those stories again. So anyway, we'll talk about Chris Moore for a moment when we come back. <laughs> what uh, is with a, you today? It's just a joke. What it's is just with a, you? I'm trying to loosen you up a little bit because you're like such a Loosen me up. You're the guy that's all fired up today, not me. I'm fine. I'm, I was looking forward to coming in, having I'm a little fun. I'm trying to divert my mental process from the internal things that are happening here. Don't you You look understand? white as a ghost I today. Am, it's a good I thing am, we're not on television I today. I am pale as, remember Alice you're a blue shirt and you're white and you're magic. Remember the movie A Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim. I'm ready to put on that silly hat and the gown and start dancing around just just to try to avoid the reality here, which is a pretty ugly thing. Okay, you got. Yeah, we'll get Sherry on the phone, and I'm going to give him really holy hell. I give him holy hell, but he's got no power anymore. He just talks a good game. He doesn't get anything done. Got to ask him about his tirade against the Canadians and the fans in Montreal. Oh, don't worry about that. About the frogs. Yeah. About Mike Keane. Okay, they get rid of Mike Keane, the ex-captain. Captains are flying out of there. If you don't speak French up there, if there's anybody down here that thinks bilingualism works, just look at that election they had up there. Just look at the whole Montreal Canadian organization. They had to bring in Pierre Turgeon and all those frogs to satisfy them. And anybody who dared to make a comment about it, like Mike Keane, who was the last captain, you're out. Okay. Kirk Muller is out. Mike Keane is out. You got to have a frog. Last four captain, captains, including Guy Carboneau. There's a, a, a Frenchman that got traded. It's a and frog. He was a captain. It's a frog fest, is what it is. <laughs> anyway, 1023 at WIOD. And uh, so what's the story on the tickets? Because these people hang up. They think you got free tickets for tomorrow night's game uh, against the I guess i got to make your show, so I brought uh, 10 pairs of tickets. Oh, 10 pair. Okay. You can be sure that uh, Goofball never matched that. No chance. 1023. 10 pairs for tomorrow night. Also want to mention... In fact, <clears throat> Jeff Moss, he'd be lucky to have one pair, but that's another story. This is a feather in your cap. Do you yeah. realize, remember when we, last time we were out, we gave away the icebreaker? Yeah. Which was a six-ticket voucher. I sure do, and you didn't even understand And the was, John Van Beesbrook uh, autograph. Right. Card. Well, John's not very happy with you right now because he's had to sign quite a few pucks. Yeah. They have, they sold, sold, a ton of they have sold a ton Great. of the icebreakers. And by the way, they will stop selling them as of uh, uh, Christmas, so still time. Yeah, you still got it, like five days. That's a great holiday gift. 1-800-GO-PANT. Go call up 1-800-GO-PANT and buy that icebreaker package, which will tell you more. But that's like for six games, and it's uh, with the puck and all the no, other six stuff. Six tickets, it. not six games. <laughs> Are you going to start again admitting that you don't understand what it's for? It's not for six games. It's six tickets for one game, or you can use... Well, unless you're going by yourself, you can use it for six games. Or, th or three games for or two three people. Games. It's but those six tickets. Six tickets. You said six games. It can be. We have a lot if of anti-social people in this audience <laughs> that go by themselves, okay? Cut the crap. Okay, 1024 at WIOD. Are we still... Is this station still on the air? We're not. George says we're not on the air, so don't take it too serious. If you're short on holiday cash, need to buy Christmas presents, where are you going to get the money, right? Here's the answer for you. I'm glad you asked. Fast Auto Loans, they're your one solution whenever you need cash fast. If you got free and clear title of your car, Fast Auto Loans could put 2500 bucks in your pocket today. Don't be fooled by the imitators and wind up paying way too much interest. Fast Auto Loans isn't a pawn shop. You don't pay them some gigantic balloon payment, and you sure as hell don't sign over the title to your car. Fast Auto Loans just has a lien on your title. You drive the car, you get the cash. That's the way it works. No embarrassing credit checks, no long approval process to sit around waiting on. So call now for instant approval, and the cash will be in your hands within 24 hours with special holiday rates where they need the money for a month, for a year, for a lifetime. Fast Auto Loans is fully licensed by the Florida Department of Finance, and they participate in BBB Care. That's a program administered by the Better Business Bureau of South Florida. Three convenient locations, soon to be four. They're in Broward, they're in Dade, they're in Palm Beach. Call them today, get some money in your hand. 1-800-910-FAST. 1-800-910-FAST. This is Rick Riley. I'm going skiing in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, February 17th through the 24th. I'd love to have you come with me. So let's go. Pick up the phone, make the call to Peter Glenn Travel, and come on out to Steamboat with us. Check this out. You're going to be getting round-trip air to Denver, bus transfer to Steamboat, accommodations at the ranch. It's an absolutely gorgeous place with an outdoor heated hot tub, pool, sauna, 
plus a five-day lift ticket to ski Steamboat's Champagne Powder and an on-mountain barbecue and a NASCAR race with trophies and awards. All of this starting at just $999. But hurry up, seats are going fast. Time is running out. Call Peter Glenn Travel today at 1-800-FUN-TO-SKI. That's 1-800-FUN-TO-SKI. And make sure you don't get left behind. Get your reservations now. Call 1-800-FUN-TO-SKI. That's 1-800-FUN, the number 2, S-K-I. Six ten W I O D. Set your pager to vibrate. This is Joe Ball and the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs. They don't come any better than Neil Rogers. <laughs> and Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Brought to you by Molson Exports. X says it all. By Board of Canada, where quality is job one, it's working. By Imperial Oil and Esso Associates, proud to be one of the leading sponsors of youth hockey in Canada. And by Pepsi, gotta have it. Okay, we like to balance things out a little bit. We got one guy here that's a uh, butt kisser and don't tell it like it is. We got another guy. We figure we better balance it out and get grapes on here. Don Cherry is here who doesn't kiss butt and does tell it like it is most of the time. Hi, Neil. Hey, uh, that scene, all the Canadians down there have got chills right now. I tell you, that's, that's one of the greatest scenes of all time. It, it really is, and I can remember Bill Hewitt. I want to put that bug in here again. I remember him coming yeah. on the air. Yeah, I sure do, but of course you don't have him in the Hall of Fame yet. You know, I give you an easy assignment. Well, neither am I. Yeah. You're not? No. Well, that's because you've made too many enemies. That's, that's your problem. True. Hey, Graves, get this guy off my back, will you? <laughs> get this guy off my back. Okay, now listen, you I know... You know like it is, right, Neil? That's right. Grapes and I are the only two in America, in North America, that tell it like it is. Now, I just oh, was, now you're being nice to him. When you're you sucking stop up to him. Hang on a second. Now you're phone. being nice to him and sucking up to him. You're ready to carve him last week. Wait till I get Cherry I on here. Gonna, I'm going to straighten him I out, too. Carve now him. you're saying he's the only guy that tells it like it is. I'm shutting his mic off, Grapes. Good, good. Keep so, quiet. So anyway, I was just telling him about his good friend J.D., John Davidson. He loves yeah. dropping names, Remember, You know, his good buddy J.D. Oh, I, know, yeah. I know that J.D., you think every now and then, is full of crap. And, of course, he keeps talking through the game, and poor Sam Rosen's got to put up with that stuff. And now, I, I told Rimmer it's catching because Saturday night I'm watching the Leafs game, and you guys are out there in Los Angeles. Harry is talking over poor Chris Cuthbert. You know, it's bad enough we got to put up with Chris Cuthbert. We want Bob Cole doing the Leafs. We don't want him to do no frog games. We want him on the Leafs. So we got to put up with Chris Cuthbert. Harry is talking over while the Leafs score the first two goals. Then Ron McLean is talking to Bob uh, oh, Rob, yeah. to Rob Blake there when uh, Di Pietro scores the goal. Now, what the hell is going on here? Get these old jocks off the air already. Doesn't matter, Neil. Doesn't matter at all. Longest coach's corner is great. That's <laughs> it. I, uh, well, we we figured we'd talk to you about the frogs today. That's uh, that's one of the things. Coach's that... corner a week, uh, not this past Saturday. I was yeah. telling Don this the other day when I called him <laughs> to invite him on your show, Neil. The show before this last Saturday's was one of the best, one of the all-time classics. And I guess well, you got a little flack for that the, one, You huh? better hang on to your seat tight, Grapes. The suction's starting already. Wait a minute. They're all good. There's just some better than others. Okay, yeah. well, that one was better. <laughs> that one was a lot better. And I'll tell you what. You went after the fans in Montreal. You went after Rajon Ull. And you went after Mario Tremblay. But I was a little disappointed you still haven't used the word frog yet. You're coming close I with that claw, claw the fraud, but you still aren't using the frog yet. Well, when I, I was the guy that started Pat Roy, I don't understand them. I never heard of Raw Rogers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Raw Rogers. Yeah, they're about Florida. I mean, this is one of the greatest stories in the last 10 years. It's and, unbelievable. And when are you guys going to get on it already? When are you oh, going to learn we got the best coach going? Absolutely. And, and he's going to be on the All Star team, if you can believe that. I was there in the league seven years, never made it once. Because he's going to, if they end up first place in their conference, he could be in the All Star. That's right. With Mark Crawford. That's I wonder right. if he'll come up with his own video now. Challenge you. No, oh, never. No, Are you kid. Nobody touches that one. We're uh, going over two hundred thousand this year. Unbelievable. Rock 'em sock 'em seven. Yeah. You I'll haven't sent Neil and I our copies yet. Hey. Okay. You haven't sent Neil and I our copies. Get you and Neil, I'll get you one. It's just, uh, it's just I'm so busy up here that you know how that is. But uh, Scott Melvey, thirty-six points. You guys know that Jody Hall. Uh, 
plus 17 leads the league in uh, shooting percentage. There you go. Okay. Jody Hull is God. I've been saying that all along. These guys don't know what they don't know what it's all about. I tell you, they and you got character guys, Strudland and. and uh, Gordy Murphy. Yeah, you course. guys ought to get a little bit more on us Panthers on that hockey night in Canada. Teach some of those guys up there a little bit what about a great hockey team's all about and the fact that you don't have to pay guys millions of dollars to play well either. Uh, hey, Trump. Grapes, you know, this guy's being so nice to you today. Now, one thing you know about me, when I tell you something on or off the air, it's going to be the same. Oh, this guy. Oh, my this God. This guy. Now, hang on. Hang on, last week he's saying to you're, me, Rimmer, he says to me, so deep. I'm gonna tell <laughs> let me you finish here. Every time let he me talks about here. this frog, Denise Oh, oh here, here we go. Hang, hang on a second here. Hang on. Hang on. Let me just. I'm going to dig a hole for you. You'll hey, never get out of here. Listen to this one here. He says, wait till we get grapes on, because now I think Cliff Lecture's listening too much to grapes. We've got Bob Gartner and Ty Domi and Dummy and all these other guys. That's before Momessa's Scored the two goals in that one game, though, see? I love a guy like Momesso, uh, and how about uh, Paul DiPietro? Yeah, that, Barry, that's, 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 a great, that's a great story. DiPietro comes back from, like, oblivion and scores yeah. right off the bat, and the kid's doing good. Uh, Paul, but anyhow, let's get back to... Uh, you guys. No, I mean, let's talk about the Leafs for just a second. You know, you didn't. Florida. Florida. We'll get, we'll get back Florida. to them. We'll get back to them in a minute. Oh, but right. how about giving our Leafs a little bit of credit? They're seven games over 500. They don't have that great of a personnel. But Pat's got them playing pretty good. Well, they're a tough team. And uh, Potman, long as Potman and Damian Rhodes, I, I don't understand why somebody doesn't go after this guy. He's better than he's a damn good. backup uh, goaltender. And he, he gets in every third game. I, I don't understand why somebody doesn't make a big... Your Bruins game. could use them. Yeah, the Bruins could use them yeah. desperate more. They, they they might as well just have an empty net, the Bruins. they got no goaltending. I felt sorry for Blaine Locker yep. the other night. He, he, he exploded after the game. He let in three quick ones, almost lost the game. You know, his second year in the league, you don't start giving uh, Boston reporters heck you. They'll remember and they'll get him. Eh? That was after the Florida game. Yeah, yeah. and he after said, we came back and almost uh, got even in that game. He's also the same goalie that told Don uh, or uh, uh, Jerry Cheevers last year, Grapes. After uh, he was struggling for a while, Cheevers, the Hall of Famer, your former goalie, Cheevers went to help the kid out and he said, "Hey, listen, the game's changed. Thanks. I know you're a Hall of Famer, but uh, no thanks." That's exactly what he told him. That's what he told him last year. He said, "You don't have to help me. I, I know how long you'd have played for you." I can't imagine it. Imagine what Cheevers thought of that guy. So he was pretty pissed off. Well, I would imagine. I never heard that one before. Really. Well, hey, you can hear a lot of things. So let's get back to this frog fest up there in Montreal. You know, we all watched with uh, with just amazed and shocked at that election up there in Quebec. That crap that went on there, and and now you see the same thing, a microcosm of it on the Canadians. Where unless you, you know, Mike Keane comes out, the captain of the team, and he made one little comment about, uh, you know, people that speak French and about if you don't do this, and all of a sudden his ass is gone, and it's true. they got to have Turgeon and all those frogs up there, and it's a sad thing that they got to build a hockey franchise based on, based on something ethnic instead of talent. Well, it's absolutely right, and uh, what about the guy in uh, uh, Denver? He said that he actually said this in the hockey news, that if he has a choice between an English guy and a French guy, he chooses the French guy. He's not right. changing one bit. They got a PR guy out there that's French that can't speak English. Figure that one out. <laughs> what are in they doing? They think they're still in Quebec. Is that it? That's it. And uh, you know, Odling, uh, Lyle Odling was uh, the absolute guy for it. He's, he's the guy that stood up in the dressing room and said, "Look, okay, the trade's there. Let's smarten up and let's start playing hockey." And he's he's the leader on this club, but unfortunately, his first name's not Pierre, so he was not the captain. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Nobody says that up here. I mean, they're absolutely afraid. We've got, believe it or not, we've got three French guys in Mississauga. We've got French signs all over the place. Sorty, Nordy, uh, West, Mud. <laughs> Four million bucks for the three French guys in Mississauga. It's unbelievable. Of course, the new, the, the, new, the, the two parties that we got running up here, both, both their names are Jean. So figure it out. And by the way, speaking of Pat Roy, since uh, the Avalanche got him, which I predicted this because I think he's washed up, they're not winning any games anymore. Well, screw them off a little. That's all you need. you got to roll it along. You, you could do the same thing in Florida. So like some uh, trade Scootland or something like that. Just throw that little chemistry They're not going to trade Scootland. Oh, I know they're not. I just said that. Like a, ca a character guy. And if they did something like that, throw the chemistry off and you're gone. Speaking of trades, how about this Newendike deal? You can't tell me sitting here 
that uh, there are a number of teams, including the Leafs, Neil Rogers Maple Leafs, and the Florida Panthers, we and the them. Devils, we don't and them. the Rangers, that couldn't have come up with a better deal than what Dallas has done in getting Joe Newendike. Boy, I tell you, Newendike is one of those uh, guys at center. He could turn the whole franchise around, but what happens in the Calgary? They're sitting there. they got to make the playoffs for those, those crowds out there. Nobody's coming up with a better deal. I mean, when you got a gun to your head like that, it's the same thing as Milbury in uh, in uh, New York Islanders. He's got a gun to his head, and uh, they're like sharks, the GMs. They just sit and wait till your weakest moment. So I guess they figure they better get something for him before the, the deadline. Well, they made the trade last night. I don't know if you heard it, yeah. but they picked up a kid from Kamloops who was the number one pick out of Dallas. Uh, last year, obviously a future. He's not going to help them make the playoffs. And Corey Millen, who Dallas didn't even bring up from the minors until the last week or two. I mean, that trade, <laughs> it stinks. Big Hatcher's the guy that's the, the, the big deal. You know, that's the... Uh, hey, you got to do something. It's the old deal that uh, it's better to have somebody there than nobody there. And if they don't get going soon, they won't make the playoffs. And you know in hockey, if you don't make the playoffs, you're in deep, deep, deep trouble financially. Well, Al Coates, I think, sealed his own fate as uh, the future general manager in Calgary with that yeah. trade. They're, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're going nowhere. That game they played against Pittsburgh last night, they might as well have stayed home. They didn't even show up. Gordy Ro- uh, Roberts, uh, you know, when you, ha- when you have guys like that out and... and uh, you, you just, you, they just lost too many guys. They did not want to let Otto go. And when you let all of the kids go, you could see they were going down the pipe as soon as he started that stuff. Vernon go. They didn't want to pay the big money, and then when you don't want to pay the big money in sports anymore, you're going to end up last. Then I'll tell you, they're playing no defense. This Trevor Kidd last night, he looked like he was uh, in the game, playing the game by himself, man. It was an ugly thing to watch, especially yeah. when you're playing those Penguins. Well, nobody's going to... Those, those, if they're in the mood to play, and, yep. and they want to play, and Barras and Reggett start coming through, they're going to be in the finals, but it's Sometimes they just show up, they're not ready to play, but boy, oh boy, can they put on a clinic if they want to go. You bet. Okay, hang on a second, Grapes. We're going to do a little break. We'll come right back. Don Cherry's here, and uh, Jeff Rimmer's here to hold his hand. It's 21 till 11 at WIOD. You're going to love it now more than ever. It's the new Pompano Park Racing for the thrill and excitement of live harness racing action and nightly full card simulcasting from your favorite tracks. Come visit Pompano Park Racing. Now racing will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, like tonight, with first post time, 7.30. This Friday night's co-features will be the Philly and Mare Open Pace and the Open Trot for a full night's worth of valuable entertainment. Start off at the top of the park restaurant, get yourself a great meal, enjoy a beautiful panoramic view of the skyline, and plunge your brains out. Come check out South Florida's nighttime hotspot for food, for fun, excitement. Take I-95 or the Turnpike to the Atlantic Boulevard exit and south to Powerline Road. For good times, good food, and great racing, it's the new Pompano Park Racing, and the best news is Jackie Lee won't be there. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers on WIOD are not necessarily those of the station or its sponsors. All WIOD programs are copyright 1995 by WIOD Incorporated. No tape recordings or transcripts may be created or distributed without prior written consent of WIOD Incorporated. This is Mike Brophy, senior writer with the Hockey News. They don't come any better than Neil Rogers. Patrick Kent trying to get into the clear gun. Going right in and goes, he's good! Okay, so we got a little Bill Hewitt on there to try to put the uh, plant the seed in Cherry's mind again to get him in the Hall of Fame and quit uh, postponing the inevitable, you know? Well, I do the best I can. Uh, uh, I'm not too popular with the Hall of Famers, as uh, Rimmer knows, but I'll do my best. If I put the word in for him, he won't make it for sure. Yeah, it sounds like you got Neil Rogers syndrome. Yeah. Same well, things know, happen to me. R- Rimmer said to me, he said, you know, every time you're on with Cherry, you never play one of my calls, one of those great calls the Panthers score all these goals. <laughs> oh, he here says, we how go. about playing a Jeff Rimmer call of one of those great goals? <laughs> so I said, today's the day I'm going to do it so so Cherry can hear some of your great work. There's Francis after the puck. Behind the goal. Lindros beats the and it clears, but not out. Sands on the far side. The puck to Francis, now back to Sanford and Lemieux around the net. Lemieux turns around and shoots it. Garcino made the save on him. Mario's got it back one more time. Lemieux again settles in. Goes to Francis. Will he shoot it? No. The Yager. He walks it. He's got a chance here. Shoots. Scores! Ted Hove. He called through a Yako cigarette, too. He smoked him like a bad cigar. You leave Yager like that one-on-one, he will burn you in a tie hockey game. Yarmir Yager. He's starting to sound more like Mike Lang all the time, isn't he, Grapes? Uh, that, uh, you know, I, I, when I hear stuff like that, you know, I want to absolutely weep. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I hear this guy's 
feed him like a dead <laughs> mule and stuff like that. Way to go, Grapes. I, I love I you, Grapes. This, I knew this was set up ahead of time. It wasn't set up. How much was the check for? How much did he send you to say this? Uh, well, I can't say. I, look, hockey, I, I know all the stuff for coming in. We're standing on our heads. And, and we're pretty soon we're, we're going to be announcing goals like, boo. We're going to have little midgets running around. Well, that's, Chris Moore. that's Chris Moore does that. Pardon? Chris Moore does that. I know. I'd he like, already says that. Uh, I, I just, uh, I, you know, baseball <laughs> has been the same since the 1800s. We make more rule changes. We have guys coming in. How about this one, uh, Rimmer? Fail to hold the zone. Uh, I like the one, uh, yes, lateral movement. That means sideways? Keep the puck in, I guess. Uh, reverse curl. I mean, that means he turn and come back. How about, how, about, how about this one? The hard around. Oh, the hard around, yeah. Sounds like something sexual to me. Yeah. <laughs> right, right yeah. Shoots it in on a hard like, around. Yeah. I don't That's want to only... tell you Rimmer's the one that says that one, by the way. I don't like the one where they say the soft zone. I don't like that one. Well, that's another sex thing, see? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pot fan again, Denise. Hey, Felix, Gra Denise. Graves, Graves, let's get serious here for a minute. Yeah. You're, uh, coaching in the the subject. You're coaching in the National Hockey League today. Yes. And, and this uh, takes over for a debate that Neil and I had last time I was in here. You're coaching in the NHL today. You have your choice as your number one center, Lindros or Lemieux. Who do you take? I'll take uh, Lindros. Uh, all right, all right. Well, Unrehearsed. You, know, you know, I've been had before in my life, but this is the <laughs> biggest setup I've ever been put in the middle of in my no life, No way, it's not a setup. The last time I got set up like this was those Cambridge diet fakers that came in. They set up all the calls ahead of time. <laughs> That's like 15 years ago, for crying out loud. This thing is all planned. It's all scripted. I can't believe even Cherry's got a price. I can see that. No <laughs> First of all, the eight. Second of all, the back, yeah. Uh, and Lindros is a complete package. There's no, there hasn't been a, lo a guy come along like him. Big, tough hit, fight, block shot, score goals, set up things. All right, let, let's, let's, put the que let's put the question a little bit different. Right now, forget about who you'd rather have for the long run. Right now, who's playing the best in the league? Well, I'd, I'd have to say Mario when he plays right now. There's no doubt about it. No uh, doubt about it. Uh, Lindros has been hurt a couple of times. Yep. He gets hit, hurt, and blocking shots, and that's one thing Mario will ever be. I'm going to tell you, Mario scored a goal last night. I don't know if you saw Beautiful the, goal. I don't know if Beauty. you saw the highlights. It's about the third time I've seen him. He's yeah. behind the red line. It's an impossible angle, and somehow he slides it across that red line and just it just curves into that. I don't know how anybody has got the long reach. That angle. No, that was he's a superb goal, and he's done it three times. Yeah. Once against the Panthers. Right. Well, Bobby Orr said uh, there, he has never seen a guy. Uh, he's the best he's ever seen uh, skill-wise. Maybe not the best player. But skill-wise, he's the best he's ever seen. Uh, that was when Bobby didn't look in the mirror, that's all. It. Yeah. But he, he's got skills. He made a move on Bork two years ago. That for Raymond Bork, all-star North. I'm not putting a knock on him. He put him. He was screwing himself right into the ice. Remember that one where he gave him a zoom, come back, and walked around? I mean, he does things that it's unbelievable. He was a floater the first two or three years. He would definitely was a floater, but he went to Team Canada. And he saw Gretzky and he saw Tockett and guys like that that showed up every night. That's when he turned into a hockey player. Well, you know, there's some guys, you talk about Bobby Orr, there are some guys in this town, I don't want to say who they would like to pretend that Denise Potvin was a better defenseman than Bobby Orr. Well, and to the, listen, I'm not knocking Potvin. He was tough, too, and he could put the puck in and he could make plays. He could block shots. He could do it all. But you put him in the same class with Bobby? I put him right right behind Bobby, but behind. nobody. I'm not talking defense, but I'm talking play. I'm I don't think I don't think Bobby want to have him right behind him. Uh, well, listen, if you could have, you, if we be in, uh, and you talk to Denny, and he could say, I'm right up close to or it's pretty good. Third Savard said, there's uh, players, stars, superstars, and then there was Bobby Orr. There you go. Speaking of Sir Savard, I read yesterday that uh, he was interviewed for the Ottawa general manager's job. I couldn't, uh, just a minute, I, what was, was that again? Was Rose got you doing some... Rose uh, is hollering at me. She wants me to put up the Christmas tree. Uh-oh, well, we're going to have go to ahead, let you... Go ahead, Neil, go ahead. What was that again about Sir my buddy? I was going to say Sir Savard, uh, the story was, I, I read it yesterday in the Boston Globe that he was uh, at least interviewed and being considered for the GM job in Ottawa before they hired Pierre Gauthier. Oh, I don't. Third, I talked to Third after the thing. He was after he got fired, and he was a wiped out man. And he's this guy, as Rimmer will tell you, is a, a millionaire. He doesn't need that aggravation. I'll tell you that right now. But that'd be good because, again, you have to have a French guy 
in Ottawa because Hall's right across the river and they're trying to get the French people to come in. That's why they give Dago uh, uh, $12.5 million. They find most overrated player in, in the game, most overpaid player in the game. Oh, ever in the history of sports. Yep. And in the meantime, they're not drawing flies in there, and uh, they're going to build that big, uh, bigger arena, and uh, they're still not going to draw flies unless they got a product to put on What are we going to get to talk about uh, Florida? I'd like to... Okay, say, let's, do, let's do it. And I want to hear more about Florida the Hockey Night in Canada so all these people uh, all over the world with their satellite dishes can hear what a great team and a great coach we got. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, he went under, Doug uh, McLean went under a very cloud getting that job because everybody said, and I'm going to say it, the only reason he got it was that uh, Brian Murray is his friend and uh, that's why he got it. And Yeah, I got I got sucked into that. They, that's what I believe. Yeah, and then somebody said, well, Brian got him because uh, then he could fire him a little and then he could back coach it again. I guess he showed them all. Uh, Jovanovski, I'm telling you, this guy, he is one of my favorite players. The guy comes down that left side, boy, in his side, and when he hits, he's like, you know, he reminds me of Lindros in a way. He hits to hurt. He just doesn't hit, to, you know, hit to hit to impress everybody. And what a great kid. Loves to play the game. Grapes always with a smile on his face. And, and I had to laugh one time when he was in the finals two years ago. They brought all the first-rounders down, and I remember, you remember this, I put them on Coach's Corner, and uh, Sports Illustrated said, it must have been a real thrill to meet uh, Mark Messier, you know, after the cup. He said, no, no, the real thrill was going on Coach's Corner with great. That's true. Him. That's why I love him. That's Anyhow, why you love him. I, I knew there was another reason. Now, I know you're not too big on those Europeans, but this kid, Radak Dvorak, this kid's going to be a star. Well, uh, Doug McLean said he's a tough kid, I said, yeah, comparatively speaking, so we won't go into that. Yeah, he's not bad, but uh, the playoffs come around, and then you're going to get Terry Parker plus 14. Paul, if anybody, you got a lovely blend here. You Anybody wants to fool around, you got Paul Laws, he can straighten them out, and everybody talks about Van Beesbrook, and, and he is a gay, 14-7-1, but I never hear anybody talking about Fitzpatrick, 9-1-1. Yeah. One one. I That's never right. hear anybody saying He's played word. phenomenal. That's right. Yeah. Well, see, they, the only name they know down here, unfortunately, is Van yeah. Beesbrook because they like the sound of it. But Fitz, Fitzy's played great, too. Well, but, now, and, of course, all this stuff about the Europeans, it must make your blood boil when you watch those Red Wings out there. Well, again, great regular season. We don't know if they'll choke in the playoffs, but they put that all-Russian line, those five Russian guys out there. You must be going nuts. Well, first of all, you got Paul Coffey, 1,000 points, can't make the power play. Figure that one out. And uh, all i got to say, when I was on a Detroit talk station, crash line, crash line. And uh, River knows what I'm talking about. Palik, uh, Peluso, and McKay. They threw them out against those Europeans there. They, they had to get cattle prods to get them on the ice. <laughs> and you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have character guys. I know the Europeans. You gotta have them popped in the goals net. But uh, in the playoffs, take a look at the guys that come through in the playoffs all the time. And now one guy's on Detroit. He can't get on the ice. Cicerelli. Yeah, well, I, there's another thing. Well, I knew we'd never get through. I never knew we'd never get through the whole hour without Rimmer getting Cicerelli's name in there well, at least they've once. Been, they've been fighting since he got there. You know, Dino, he's always... Uh, Dino and Scotty fought before they got there. Yeah, uh, and... Here's he the guy that's your best playoff guy. Was his best. They were, he, if they all played like he did in the playoffs last year, uh, they might have won the Stanley Cup. Thank but, you very uh, much. Okay, well, that's true. we're going to let you go, but let me just uh, make your prediction right now. Put you on the spot. Who do you like in the uh, finals? I like Detroit, Pittsburgh in the finals, and you won't believe this, Rimmer. Num I was almost what I said, we're almost Paul McClain. At the very opening, he had a, you know, how you have a talk and you got about a minute to go or something, you got to fill. Right off the bat, before the season started, the first game, he says, who's going to win the Stanley Cup and who's going to be in the, the, the finals? So I got, I said, what, are you kidding? The kid hasn't even started. You, you got to tell me right now, I said, Detroit, Pittsburgh with Detroit winning it. And that was before. And you wow. Think, no and you think that I am amazing. You I think this you into silence. <laughs> I know that. And you think this is the year they're finally going to forget how to choke. Is that what you're saying? That's, this is the year they're going to try to choke. But I'll tell you, my, my favorite team to watch, i got to say right now, is Chicago. I'll tell you something, boy. They're not doing very good, but when they, if something moves on the ice. Yeah, they come to it, play. And Probert is playing the best he ever played his life. But, me, but I'm going to tell you, Eddie the Eagle, man, pretty shaky these yeah, days. He's not playing very not well. Playing well. Eddie the Eagle, they got to get the hacket in there. Eddie the Eagle, he had 29 shots in two games and lost some both. Then Griesbrick gets that sometimes in a, in a period. Right. No way. He's Belfer. I said this along. He plays when he wants to play. 
you got to get Hackett in there. He's won his last three. Hey, Grapes, what's your prediction for the Panthers in the playoffs? I, it, it all depends, again, you go back to you know, Van Viesbrook or Fitzpatrick, if you have and your injuries. You guys got a team that you can't have two or three injuries. You have two or three serious injuries, then it's uh, sayonara. But you I know what? It's a little different, though, here, and, and this is something you can talk about on Hockey Night in Canada, a little different with the Panthers because they don't have a superstar, and Doug McLean can roll four lines. Yeah. And when it gets to the playoffs, things tighten up defensively. The Panthers can play that well. They've got a decent back line, and they've got, as you mentioned here a couple of times, they've got great goaltending. So they are going to be in the playoffs now. If they play 500 from here on yeah. in, they're, they're in the in. playoffs. And the fact of the matter is, anything, as you well know, as coach of the Bruins, anything can happen in the playoffs. Well, that's true, but the only thing I see about Florida, they haven't been there before, and sometimes when a team like that makes the playoffs, they say, oh, this is their Stanley Cup, and you've seen that before. They've okay. got to think it's not enough just to make the playoffs. They've got well, to do. Talk us up up there, will you please? I'll do our best. Okay, thanks a million. Have a great holiday, Grapes, and we'll talk to you soon. Toodaloo. Okay. Say hi to Rose. 1056 at WIOD. Did you know you can buy a Dolphin football helmet for just $9.99? It's true. It even has the Dolphins' official logo on it. What's more, it's the most delicious football helmet you've ever come into contact with. That's because this football helmet is the newest ice cream cake from Carvel. It's shaped like a helmet decorated with the Dolphins' logo and handmade of rich, delicious ice cream. Your participating Carvel ice cream bakery, your favorite supermarket's got them for only $9.99. And with proof of purchase, you can send in for a free spiral football. So look for the Carvel football helmet cake at your participating Carvel Ice Cream Bakery or your favorite supermarket. They're only $9.99, so pick up a bunch for the holidays. And don't forget to send in for that free spiral football, too. The Carvel Football Helmet, it's at your Carvel Ice Cream Bakery right now because Carvel believes everything should be made of ice cream, even dolphin football helmets. If you watch the Weather Channel cable network, you'll see messages touting 610 WIOD as the radio station with the best news, traffic, and weather. The Weather Channel knows, and that's why they called us. No pancake weather babes here. Weather pros on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Okay, we're almost up on the news now, which I never, ever do that. But in the case when you got grapes on the phone, you don't monkey around, monkey around and cut it short. And it's real fascinating to see. Like I said, when you're had, you admit it. You say, okay, I've been had. I know this was a setup deal. During the break now, Rimmer admitted he sent a nice check up there, a nice holiday check to Chiray. I did he nothing of the sort. Mike Lang, a big ass. Oh, give a song and dance about Eric Lindros. And, you know, everybody's got their price. You wish. Emotional stability is not what it's cracked up to be. WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD.